Hello there friends and welcome for today's BG3 guide we have at long last a true Eldritch Knight build. As my previous fighter mage guide was more about Bard. This time it's full Eldritch Knight and we'll be making great use of one of its most unique abilities. Turning any weapon into a returning weapon when thrown. The throwing playstyle is amazing by default but even better with this. You'll have all the nice spell support from Eldritch Knight plus the numerous attacks per turn only a fighter can get, not to mention loads and loads of damage, including many damage stacks. Perfect for tactician mode. With of course the advantage of being great even early, because that's how good throwing is, with many powerful gear and feat choices as early as level 4. So without further ado, let us get into our Eldritch Knight throwing build first with character creation. When it comes to race, it doesn't really matter much for this build type, because, well, you'll be starting as a fighter, which means you already have all of the proficiencies you could want. But as always, Githyanki can help with higher skill checks, plus it's very fitting for an Eldritch Knight, that's where the term Gish comes from, if you know what I mean. Even Gnome, so you are tankier against enemy crowd control effects, or if you want higher movement, although you don't need it because of thrown weapons, half elf, and Wood Elf. For the fighting style, well, either defense if you want higher AC or dueling. The thing with dueling is it's gonna take a while before you can actually benefit from this with thrown weapons, right? Because the best thrown weapon for Act 1 is two-handed, so it's not gonna work anyways. And for the second act, you need to have the dual build feat. But I'll give you the option of getting that anyways during the build progression. So it depends on whether you want something that works as early as you can get it, defense, or f higher damage later on. For your stats, strength is the way to go for any throwing build, especially because of the Tavern Brawler feat. After all, it increases both your two hit and also damage. Then I would dump Intelligence and Wisdom, assign a plus one to Dexterity so we can start with 16. The reason is simple, while we do have access to Heavy Armor, Initiative is still paramount to winning battles successfully. And then 15 constitution because you'll increase it to 16 eventually. You don't really need the other stats at all. Yes, you'll have low will saving throws, but who cares? That's the point of high initiative. If you're acting first, you just snipe enemy spellcasters before they can crowd control you, right? However, you can also go with high intelligence if you prefer. It's just that... Well, for that you have to dump both your dexterity and constitution, which I don't enjoy. I suppose you can always dump constitution because, well, you are ranged building away with throwing weapons, but dexterity is really important for initiative. Anyways, intelligence is not needed for an Eldritch Knight as far as spellcasting because you don't have to prepare spells, nor do you care about spell DC. Its most important use would be to enhance the damage of your attacks through a certain helmet called the Diadem of Arcane Synergy that increases your damage equal to your intelligence modifier. At most it would be a plus 3 to damage, which I don't think it's that worth it when considering you have to dump your dexterity and constitution for that. Especially as it costs the helmet slot and we have a lot of powerful helmets for higher critical range, starting from the second act. So I'd rather just dump intelligence then 16 Dexterity and 15 Constitution. And for your skills, Athletics can always help because you have high strength and then whatever else you want. Githyanki's of course can highly increase skills of a certain ability, like all of the Charisma ones. So just pick a background that will further enhance what you want. As always the classic Guild Artisan, for Insight and Persuasion there's a lot of dialogue checks with these two skills, even if you won't have high Wisdom or Charisma and whatever else you want here. Intimidation fits a fighter, so let's go with that. At the second level we have Action Surge, always amazing, especially as later we'll have three attacks per each action. That's the power of fighter. For level three you'll finally enter into Eldritch Knight. And let's cover one of its most unique features, Weapon Bond. The most interesting part about this is that it will make any weapon into a returnable throwing weapon. However, there are around two limitations to this. First, while you can throw any weapon, only weapons that have the innate throwing property by default, 
such as daggers, hand axes, javelins, light hammers, spears and tridents, will have higher damage. Which means if you bond with, let's say, a great sword and throw it, it will return to your hand just fine so you can spam it more and more. However, the damage will be extremely low, only one base damage instead of the normal weapon's melee damage. Sadly, it's a pretty big limitation. I'd honestly much rather this also add the throwing property to any weapon, right? Then you could have fun throwing anything at the enemy. Sadly, it's not the way it is implemented in the game so far. Anyway, second, some weapons that are throwable will not get extra damage applied. For example, we have this Warhammer here. The Radiant extra damage will not work when throwing. Anyways, the good thing is there is an amazing weapon at the second act that will be enhanced by this ability just fine. For the first act, you'll have a returnable weapon, the same for the third act. For the cantrips, definitely Blade Ward for full physical damage resistance, ideally when pre-buffed, and anything else you want. I wouldn't really bother with the damage cantrips, because you just want to throw stuff at the enemies. The damage is going to be way higher. Let's say Light for Utility, Friends, even Mage Hand. And for spells, definitely Shield. It is the best one out of these here, by far and can really help enhance your defenses as you already have access to heavy armor. Plus anything else you want, like let's say chromatic ore because of how versatile it can be. Now for your spended selection, I really enjoy Find Familiar, right? Because it's an extra summon and the raven can blind enemies for an even easier time hitting them. Later we'll get more and more out of the expanded spells anyways. For level 4, any other normal spell, it won't matter because you'll just replace it. And speaking about replacing, the good thing is that as an Eldritch Knight, you can replace a spell you have, let's say Chromatic Orb, for one of the expanded spells even, right? So you aren't stuck picking expanded spells just at certain levels. Good choices are Fog Cloud, if you are a race with Dark Vision, or the classic Long Strider if you don't have anyone else that can cast it, for higher movement on all party members as this is infinite cast out of battle. Even something like False Life can work if you want temporary hit points. Now, for our first feat, as with any throwing or unarmed build, Tavern Brawler is of course the way to go, there is no other option at all. This is one of the best feats, if not the best feat in the game, for how much it does. Double your strength modifier, which can go as high as 27 later. For both thrown and unarmed, two hit and damage, right? So it's perfect. You also get to add a plus one to strength for constitution. I'd rather constitution for strength. Well, you have the hag power up from act one. Plus level up bonuses. Trust me, this feat is a game changer. It's why builds like this are so strong even as early as level four. And it only gets better and better from there. Including level five because it's when you get the extra attack for double attacks per action. You might as well replace a previous spell like Protection from Evil and Good as you pick another one of the best expanded spells, like Fog Cloud as I mentioned before. Level 6 Fighter, even as Eldritch Knight, is great because we get yet another feat, and you have two options. Alert is a classic, even with 16 Dexterity it still helps to have Alert, because it will guarantee you always act first before any enemy, including bosses. And if you're acting first with a build with Tavern Brawler and so many ranged attacks, you're just deleting everything that matters fast. Otherwise, ability improvement and strength, after all we get double bonuses from Tavern Brawler, or also Dual Wielder. As I said before, it can help proc the Dualist bonus to damage by just having, let's say, the best throwing weapon for the second act, and then you equip another melee weapon on the offhand, like let's say, for example, the Knife of the Mountain King, which increases your critical range for all attacks. If you have just that Trident and a Shield, I don't think it's gonna work, despite the fact it says dueling is meant to work with Shields, because the weapons are versatile. Anyways, it will work 100% if you have a throwing weapon and a melee weapon on the offhand. So, the choices between these three feats, you can actually pick all of them, the only difference is the order you prefer. I really enjoy alert because alpha strikes are that good, so it's what I'm gonna pick. For level 7 we get our second level spells rather late, 
Which is why my previous Fighter Mage guide I went with Bard, because, well, you get spells way, way faster, including even up to level 6 spells. But anyways, the ones you have here are kinda poor. It's best to wait for the expanded spells you'll get soon enough. I suppose you can go with Scorching Ray and... Honestly, anything you want, because the rest of the spells don't really matter. Level 8 is when we have our expanded spell selection. Ideally, Mirror Image, because it doesn't require concentration and can increase your AC to the max. Then replace a spell, let's say Scorching Ray or whatever else you picked as a second level spell, for another expanded second level one. Blur can help, because you don't really have many sources of concentration with this build. Just to make you even tankier, but I think Mirror Image is more than enough. There's always missed its step for teleportation, as this build doesn't really require many uses of bonus actions, unlike Barbarian Throwers. Or you can just rely on gear for this. Meanwhile, for the feat, well, it's between the choices I mentioned before. I'll be going with Dual Wielder just for fun now. Level 9 means the Indomitable feature for higher chances of resisting effects. And you can, of course, also get more spells by replacing if you want. Any other cantrip at level 10. The same for, well, another spell. Because like I said, the default spells are rather poor in comparison. You just want to replace them for something else. Level 11 is huge for a fighter, and the main reason I recommend you remaining a pure fighter until now, as an Eldritch Knight, well, not only you increase your spell progression, but most importantly, the third extra attack per each individual action, which only fighter or druid gets, and I suppose also warlocks with Pact of the Blade. But no other class in the game gets this. It really increases your maximum attack spell round by a lot, especially because it's permanent, right? So it's not reliant on limited resources. And any other spell, you already have the best ones. Level 12 is when I'd say you can multi-class with something else. Because the third extra attack is really that good. I suppose wizard multi-classing even earlier can also provide you with any spell access, but you won't have high spell slots with this build, unless you multi-class way, way earlier, at which point you're kinda not an Eldritch Knight fighter anymore. Honestly, I'd rather the character remain simply pure, right, because we get an extra feat. In my case, ability improvement to maximize our strength. Alright, now let's discover a gear for our Eldritch Knight Thrower. For the helmet slot, Act 1 doesn't really matter, I mean, there's always the Haste Helm, but you don't really need high movement with ranged throwable weapons. However, you can actually still melee with them if you want, after all you will have high strength. They are versatile enough for both throwing and melee. So you might as well keep to the headband of intellect just for higher skill checks. But for the second act, as always, because you are ranged as throwing, the dark justicier or the covert cow for higher critical range. And for the last act, definitely Saravox, also for higher criticals. You can also go with the Diadem of Arcane Synergy, as I mentioned before. It's just that I don't find the extra damage boost that needed, because of how much of an investment it is. Especially since you'll be replacing the critical boosting helmets for this. Cloaks don't matter at all, you have the Cloak of Displacement if you want, or even Shade Slayer for higher criticals out of stealth, because you are ranged. For armor, well, you can go with anything you want, after all, you do have up to heavy armor, the maximum possible. If you want higher tanking power, the Adamantine Splint Armor is the best for Act 1 and 2, and later you can replace it for Hell Dusk. Otherwise, the Luminous Armor can be very fun starting from the second act, because you'll have an easy source of radiant damage through the Callous Glow Ring, to debuff the enemies when you attack them. AC is not really important for this build, I mean, you are ranged and you have high initiative. For gloves, for the entire Act 1 and 2, you absolutely want the gloves of Uninhibited Kushiko for higher damage when throwing. For Act 3, however, be sure to replace it with Helldusk, as it's a higher bonus. Boots don't matter at all, just go with anything you want, like the Disintegrating Nightwalkers for Misty Step and Teleportation. For Amulets, for once we don't want Broodmother's Revenge, because unfortunately, it doesn't apply the extra damage to throwing weapons. Therefore, you can go with anything you want, including the classic Surgeon Subjugation, which is amazing for bosses, for free criticals, through Paralyzation, or anything else, like the classic Amulet of Misty Step, so you save the boots for someone else, even the amulet of greater health for the highest hit points possible. 
or the Face Semblance Amulet for advantage on mental saving throws, although you don't need this if you are a gnome. For rings it's all about extra damage, especially the Ring of Flinging, as you can find it as early as Act 1, for an extra 1d4 bonus to throne damage. You can then combine it with the Kalos Glow Ring, because the extra 2 points can be applied multiple times per attack even. And don't forget, from chapter 2 onwards you always have the classic Risky Ring for advantage on all attacks, which means higher criticals. Or you can just rely on spell effects for advantage like Fairy Fire from other allies. Now let us cover weapons and consumables. For Act 1 you absolutely want the Returning Pike, and you can find it super early even. It's actually a two-handed weapon by the foe, so won't work with the Duelist tile, but has amazing base damage, 1d10, close enough to a great sword. It's also returnable by default, so you don't really need to bother with the Bond Weapon ability from Eldritch Knight. However, for the second act, you can, well, either keep it or replace it for something special. The Lightning Jabber Spear. It has decent enough damage, plus lightning damage on hit as well, which will work with your throwing weapons. The only downside is it's not returning by default, however, that's where your Bond Weapon ability finally comes into play. It can even shock enemies on hit, it's a pretty good spear. For Act 3, however, it's always going to be the classic legendary Trident Nairuna. After all, it deals not only a lot of extra damage per hit, but even area of effect, centered on the main target. For the offhand, remember, this only works if you went with the dual wielding feat, which I did pick. For Act 1 and 2, the Knife of the Under Mountain King, for a higher critical chance. Or you can also go with the Rhapsody Dagger at Act 3, if you want up to plus 3 bonuses to both your attack rolls and also damage, instead of higher critical chance. Also, while it is true that when throwing weapons, you can do it from your inventory, whatever you throw that returns will automatically be equipped back on your main slots, right? So you can't really cheese it by having, let's say, another dagger that increases critical chance and just throwing your weapon from the inventory, it will always swap back to one of your slots. But thankfully you also keep the offhand bonus, either higher critical or higher damage and to hit. As far as ranged weapons, the dead shot as always for higher criticals at Act 3, but for Act 1 and 2, well, just a classic bow of awareness for higher initiative. And for consumables, as always, it's going to be the elixir of bloodlust for higher actions, thus way more attacks, especially as a fighter build that gets triple attacks per each individual action. Well, alright friends, so this was it for my Eldritch Knight throwing build. If you found it useful, as always, please remember to like, subscribe and consider becoming a channel member if you can. I truly appreciate your support. Thank you for watching and see you next time, friends.